I will stay with children, but still on a rather sad note. The Domestic Violence and Victim Support Unit of the Ghana Police Service in the Western Region is demanding the birth certificate of a 14-year-old girl who has been allegedly defiled before the perpetrators are officially charged. The victim, whose name has been withheld, says she was sexually assaulted for three days by three young men before being released to go home. Her family says police investigators want them to settle the matter out of court. But Dosu in the region says the suspect will only be charged when the certificate authenticating the victim's age is produced. We'll hear from Dosu shortly, but first here's a report filed by John Isis in Athalia Kwansa and Henry Kwisibedu. On the evening of May 19, 2020, 14-year-old Abba, not her real name, was sent out on an errand by her mother. Abba only came home three days later, bleeding profusely from her vagina. Abba says she had been defiled by three young men during those days. The class six pupil was allegedly lured by the three men who gave her an energy drink laced with a substance that made her dizzy. One of the perpetrators is a friend. He lured me to his house and gave me a bottle of energy drink. When I took it, I became extremely dizzy and woke up days after, bleeding profusely from my vagina. I didn't see or feel anything at all. After returning home, Abba spent four days at the hospital. The Ahanta West police arrested the perpetrators. They have since been released with the police insisting the case be settled out of court, the family claims. Abba's father, Richard Kwerku, disagrees. My daughter was raped by three young men. After we reported the incident to the police, the boys were arrested as my daughter was also admitted for five days at a health facility in the community. I was later told the young men have been released and the police are in Mr. Kwerku wants the suspects prosecuted. This was on my blind side. We want the law to take his full course. I suspect the families of the perpetrators have given the police some money. The 14-year-old victim, who was discharged from hospital, is currently responding to treatment at home. And uh, we'll also hear from the director of Dosu, Frank Nana Amwini, who says the suspect will be put before court after verifying the girl's age. There is this 14-year-old girl that they brought to my unit as having been defied, alleged been defied by uh, three boys. This was the allegation that came. So we started investigations and we got to know that uh, among the three boys, there is one 13-year-old boy who had the sexual intercourse with the child. It was on Friday the case. After taking our statements whatsoever, we released the child and then the other two boys to their parents to produce them on Tuesday. Monday being holiday, we will not uh, uh, be in office, so they should come on Tuesday. Tuesday they came. And then we sat on the issue. The next line we need to talk. On the Tuesday, that was yesterday, the investigator went to the scene of crime with them to find out things for himself. On their return, we met again in my office, and then the next line to tow was them to try to get us a, a birth certificate or baptism certificate or even a weighing card just to tell us the age of the, uh, the victim. So that from there we can go on with the processes of our documents and then we go to court.
Now let's go into the phone lines now and speak to the Executive Director of Child Rights International, Bright of Pia. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Pia, for joining us here on Newsdex. First, uh, your thoughts on this uh, very worrying story we're getting from the Western region. Well, it's, it's very uh, disturbing uh, in the sense that uh, uh, consistently we see abuse against uh, children and the responsive nature uh, has always been distorted. We don't have any, any uniform response in dealing with this matter. Therefore, uh, people use their own discretion to exercise in terms of uh, how they want to go about the matter. And that, for me, is a worrying part of, of, of the whole thing that we should be concerned about. Otherwise, uh, there's no... Uh, where their children will have a voice that will present to them. And that is uh, something that, as a nation, we need to be very careful about. And it's a worrying situation to me. Quite worrying because you have the police uh, allegedly insisting that this is settled out of courts. Yeah, that is where the, the issue is. Uh, because, one, uh, once you are called as a child, uh, you'd have the backing of the state in terms of your protection, and that is 100 percent. And that right is not negotiable. And uh, once a child makes a statement about a person, the, 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 the system is expected to act in a manner that the child has supported it. And it is as, it's as a result of that that investigation is carried out to be able to ascertain whether or not it happened. But if right at the entry point, the police are using their discretion to determine how the case should go, should proceed. Then that is where the issue is. Because once a child walks up to you to report a matter, it is the responsibility of the gatekeeper, in this case, the police officers, to act according to what the child has reported. It is to the court to determine otherwise, not for the police to determine the birth certificate of the child not for the police to even come to the conclusion that two people were not involved. It is not, it is not their business to do that. They are expected to follow a rule. A child has come to report a matter to a statement has been taken. An allegation has been made against three people. If they, if they did not partake in it, it is not the job of the police to determine whether those people uh, they, they, they took part or not. It is, it is a decision of the court to determine that. And how, who says that when it comes to determination of age, it is only restricted to uh, uh, a birth certificate and a baptismal uh, uh, certificate? Certainly not. So far as a child is concerned, the law says that there are other alternative systems that we can, we, we, uh, we can use in determining the age of the child. So you cannot, as a police officer, determine on your own how the whole matter should proceed. And that is what it's worrying me because we expect that as gatekeepers, they, they will strictly follow the rules of engagement so far as issues of children are concerned. Then we protect their interest from, from the beginning, from the onset. But if some of these things are coming out, then you realize that we are gradually washing away evidence. We are washing away uh, things that can easily help us to come to the conclusion. You have allowed these two boys to go. I am not in a position to say whether or not they participated in the process. Mm -hmm. But once the child has reported the matter to the police, you need to take the due process to protect the best interest of the child in this matter. So just assuming that you have allowed them to go home, if there is any evidence at all to take, how are you as a police institution be able to get at least evidence that will support about 60% of the situation? So these are things that for me, as a nation, we should... We, we should we, uh, we, we, we have to be worried about it because if we are allowing some of these things to go, then I can tell you, people have a voice in this country and things will continue to happen to them as a sweet message. In cases like this, what will be the ideal way of determining or verifying the age of the victim in, this, in, in such a situation? Of course, there, 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 there are medical ways that uh, uh, the, the, the law prescribes that we, we, we can do that. Mm -hmm. And even even with that, you can even use the, 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 the class of the child to even determine the age. You know, these are all things that would give you a fair idea as to how to proceed with the matter. 
But it's not even the business of, of a police officer to request for all those things. It is, it is for a court of competence jurisdiction to determine whether or not the child who claims that to be a, a, a 13 or whatsoever, it, it, it is indeed the truth. It is not for the police to do that. Yeah. If I come, to, if I walk to the police office uh, and I say that I'm 20 years, and for that matter, I want the case to be prosecuted, it is not your business to attain my age before you, you even proceed with the case. Because even that statement alone is enough for the court to depend on it, to pass judgment in my favor or not, or to quash the case and all that. So we have to be very careful so that we don't wash away hard evidence that will support in terms of the things that we do to protect the best interest of children. Usually in such cases, you find that uh, the, the parents are usually very deprived or poor, yeah. relatively, living in very deprived areas. Uh, a, a lot of the time, they are not really literate uh, and so do not even know what to do. Uh, what should the, the parents be doing at this point whilst they wait for Dosu to verify yeah. the age of the little girl? Yeah, for the verification of age, as I've mentioned, yes, you go to the rural communities, you realize that a lot of them do not have a birth certificate or the baptismal certificate. But the matter concerning the child, they, they, you, are, you are not prepared in terms of how you should ascertain the age. And I'm saying that medically, you can, you can resort to that. Mm. So and and I just want... wanted to know what the parents should be doing, uh, because you talk about washing away evidence. Around yeah. this time, what can they do whilst they wait for that verification process? Yeah, well, for, for me, if, if the parents are able to uh, still stick to the, the information that they have and what they witnessed and what has been reported to them by the child, uh, I think that they should still stick to it. And then also, this is from having any negotiation whatsoever with any person in terms of settling the matter out of, out of court. Because it is not even within the power of parents to even determine that they want to settle the matter out of court. That alone can also constitute a criminal act against the child. So I will still insist that uh, they should do what is due so that the law can protect the interests of the child. Should the police officers be taken on for uh, allegedly insisting that the matter be settled out of court if indeed that is proven? Of course. The department cases and, 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 and the police, they know better. So I don't think that uh, a police officer would, would think that mm -hmm. a matter of department should be settled out of court. And if it is, it, it's something that we can establish. Instead of think that the police service must, must, must deal with the matter in a manner that it deserves so that institutions that are mandated to protect the interests of children will, will be clean enough to do so. Mr. Pia, thank you very much for your time here on Newsdex. We'll be following up on this. Uh, we'll get back to the police to find out where they are uh, on this verification issue, but also uh, what actions they are taking uh, against the police officers who have been pointed, uh, who have been indicted, so to speak, in this issue, uh, insisting that the matter be settled out of court, whether or not uh, that has even been verified in the first place. And uh, that's uh, Brighter Pia, he's the executive director of Child Rights International.